In the comfort of their shared New York apartment, the morning light filtered softly through the sheer curtains, casting a warm glow over the room where Ethan Grant lay sprawled on the bed, the sheets tangled around his waist, leaving him half-naked and the embodiment of relaxed nonchalance. His gaze was fixed on the phone in his hand, an expectant look in his eyes as if awaiting a disruption to the serene start of his day. The disruption came, not with a gentle knock, but with the abrupt ring of a video call, the screen flashing the names of his aunts, Julia and Helen Grant. With a sigh that spoke of both resignation and a deep-seated familial bond, Ethan answered the call, positioning the phone to capture just his face, hiding the disarray of the morning's leisure. Good morning, Ethan. Julia's voice, always so full of life, filled the room, her face beaming from the screen, Helen's nodding figure just behind her. Morning, Aunt Julia, Aunt Helen, Ethan replied, his tone light, masking the complexities of emotions their call had stirred within him. As they exchanged pleasantries, the door to the bedroom eased open, and Samantha Reed, Ethan's partner and childhood friend, stepped through. Unaware of the ongoing call, her appearance was as casual as it was stunning, her hair tousled from sleep, her presence a testament to their shared intimacy. Julia's eyes widened, her voice pitching high in surprise. Who is this beauty? Ethan couldn't resist the temptation for mischief, a smirk playing on his lips as he glanced at Samantha. Oh, that's my wife, he declared, with a sarcasm so subtle it was almost missed. The reaction was instantaneous, a mixture of shock and delight erupting from the aunts. Congratulations! Why didn't we know about this? They exclaimed in unison, their faces a picture of genuine surprise and joy. Laughter bubbled up from Ethan and Samantha, the absurdity of the situation catching up with them. It's just a prank, a popular one on the internet these days, Ethan managed to say between chuckles, the amusement clear in his eyes. Recognition dawned on Julia and Helen's faces, their expressions softening as they warmly greeted Samantha. Oh, dear Samantha, we should have known. Congratulations to you both for being such wonderful partners. As the laughter subsided, the mood shifted, the conversation steering towards a more serious tone. Ethan, we need you to come home. Julia's voice was somber, a stark contrast to the earlier joy. Ethan's expression hardened, the playful light in his eyes dimming. I've left San Diego behind, he stated flatly, a hint of bitterness creeping into his tone. Helen interjected, her voice laden with concern. The company is in trouble, Ethan. We can't manage it anymore. It's going downhill. Ethan's response was swift, his voice cold. That makes no difference to me. But then came the plea that struck a chord a revelation that painted a picture of dire urgency. Your mother, Ethan. Julia's voice trembled. She stopped eating. Her condition, it's deteriorating. The room seemed to contract around Ethan, the weight of his aunt's words pressing down on him. Despite his resolve, the mention of his mother's plight etched lines of concern across his face. It was a long time since his mother stopped talking to people. And now... It turns out she refused to eat. We're begging you, Ethan. Come back, if only to see her. If things work out, you can return to New York. Helen's plea was earnest, a reflection of their desperation. Ethan's refusal was soft this time, tinged with sadness. I can't. In the quiet of their shared space, with the city's hum as their backdrop, Samantha watched Ethan, sensing his turmoil, a storm beneath the calm. Ethan, she said softly, breaking the silence. I get it. Leaving everything behind is hard. Yale, your career, your achievements. But isn't there more to life than just this? Ethan faced her, his expression torn. Sam, everything I've worked for is here. My life is here, going back. I don't even want to think about it. But isn't stepping back sometimes the way to move forward? Samantha probed gently her words floating between them, hinting at deeper currents. There's something unresolved waiting for you, something that needs you more than your job here. Ethan's defenses seemed to waver, a hint of vulnerability in his eyes. And what if it's a mistake? What if there's nothing left to resolve? 
Samantha reached out, her touch a promise of solidarity. Then you'll have closure, knowing you faced it. This isn't about leaving your life behind, Ethan. It's about confronting what's been left unfinished. Ethan searched her face, finding a quiet strength in her conviction. Samantha stepped forward. They both graduated business management at Yale and worked for prestigious corporations. Ethan was in his 35S, Samantha in her 30s. They both knew each other since their childhood. Ethan had problems with his mom. He blamed her for being the reason for his dad's death in a horrible car accident. He couldn't forgive his mom for this. Ethan's mom, on the other hand, couldn't explain her position to the world and stopped talking to anyone. And now, she was refusing to take in any food. Samantha's voice was gentle yet firm. Ethan, you should go. For your mom. Ethan had always found Samantha's light-hearted, sometimes frivolous nature, a stark contrast to his own serious demeanor. Her ability to laugh in the face of adversity, to find joy in the smallest of things, often clashed with his methodical, often rigid approach to life. Perhaps in this instance, Samantha's ability to approach life with a blend of lightness and resolve was exactly what he needed. In that moment, a decision was forged, not just in words, but in the silent understanding shared between them. As the plane descended, San Diego unfurled below Ethan and Samantha like a vibrant tapestry, its golden beaches kissed by the Pacific, the urban landscape interspersed with green parks and the historic architecture of the gas lamp quarter. The city seemed to welcome them with open arms, its laid-back atmosphere a stark contrast to the bustling streets of New York they had left behind. The warmth of the sun, the gentle ocean breeze, and the beauty of the coastline promised a respite from the turbulence of their thoughts. Upon their arrival, Ethan directed his journey to the heart of his past, a grand mansion nestled in one of San Diego's more secluded, affluent neighborhoods. The estate, an emblem of old wealth and timeless elegance, stood majestically against the backdrop of meticulously landscaped gardens. Palm trees swayed gently at the entrance, guarding the path to the large, ornate doors that whispered tales of a storied past. Servants moved silently within its walls, their presence a testament to the opulence that Ethan's family had long been accustomed to. Julia and Helen awaited him, their expressions a mix of anticipation and relief. As Ethan approached, the warmth between them was palpable. Ethan, you're here, Julia exclaimed, her voice tinged with emotion as she stepped forward to embrace him. It's been too long, Helen added, her smile warm as she joined in the greeting. Thank you for coming. Ethan returned their embraces, the familiar bond of family enveloping them for a moment. It's good to see you both, he replied, his tone sincere. I'm here now. Let's see what can be done. The reunion was bittersweet, the joy of seeing each other again shadowed by the reason behind Ethan's return. As they exchanged pleasantries and updates, the underlying tension remained unspoken, a silent acknowledgement of the challenges ahead. It was then that Ethan noticed his mother, Claire, a solitary figure gazing out from a tiny window. Her presence was almost ghostly, her gaze fixed with pain on something only she could see. Excusing himself from his aunts, Ethan approached her room, the weight of years and unresolved emotions pressing down on him. The room was a stark contrast to the rest of the mansion, its simplicity a reflection of Claire's withdrawn state. She didn't turn as Ethan entered, her attention still captured by the world outside her window. Ethan moved closer, the distance between them charged with the weight of unspoken words and pent-up emotions. Gently, he took her hands in his, an offering of peace, a silent plea for understanding. Claire's hands were frail in his, her response muted, but in that moment, a bridge was built, fragile yet existent. Without words, Ethan communicated what he couldn't bring himself to say out loud. The complexity of their relationship, the years of silence, all condensed into the silent exchange. Yet, the resolution he had hoped for remained elusive, the chasm of their shared past too wide to cross in a single moment. Feeling the urgency of the unsaid pressing against him, Ethan abruptly excused himself, claiming the need to attend to other matters. The truth was, 
The weight of the encounter was too much to bear, the reality of his mother's condition and their fractured relationship overwhelming him. He left, driven by a need to escape, to find solace in action. Renting a penthouse for a short stay became his immediate focus, a task to distract him from the emotional turmoil. While Ethan navigated the emotional labyrinth of his family home, Samantha took a moment to reconnect with Julia and Helen, who had been a constant presence throughout her childhood. Samantha shared a unique bond with them, one that was nurtured over years of shared memories and experiences. After a tender farewell to her own parents, Samantha's spirits lifted as she made her way to the city center. The promise of coffee and conversation with Julia and Helen was a welcome distraction, a slice of normalcy amidst the whirlwind of their return to San Diego. They chose a local luxurious cafe, a place that resonated with the warmth and familiarity of old times, yet carried the promise of new beginnings. It was in this relaxed atmosphere that Samantha shared the news of the welcome home party her mother was organizing. It's in two days, she announced, her eyes sparkling with excitement. And we'd love for you to be there. Julia and Helen accepted the invitation with smiles, touched by the gesture and looking forward to the celebration. However, their conversation took a curious turn when they revisited the topic of Ethan and Samantha's supposed marriage. Are you really married then? Julia asked, her eyes twinkling with a mix of amusement and curiosity. Samantha laughed, shaking her head. No, it was just a joke we played, she clarified. Ethan and I were not married. We just visit each other from time to time. Yet the aunts, ever perceptive, hinted at a deeper truth beneath the playful facade. Every joke contains a piece of reality, Helen mused, a knowing look shared between the sisters. And Ethan, well, he's not one for jokes, especially not like that. If he speaks about something, even in jest, there must be something serious there. After quickly renting a penthouse, and with the welcome home party looming just two days away, the urgency to look his best nudged Ethan into action early the next morning. The realization that his regular tuxedo no longer fit as it once did served as a reminder of how much had changed since his last visit to San Diego. Determined to address the situation, Ethan turned to Samantha for advice, well aware of her knack for navigating social obligations with grace. Samantha, always ready to lend a hand, suggested that Ethan use the tailor her father swore by, a craftsman renowned for his skill and attention to detail. With a quick call to her father, she procured the tailor's number and passed it on to Ethan, who wasted no time in arranging an appointment. Nestled in the heart of San Diego's affluent suburbs, the Reed household stood as a testament to elegance and tradition. This sprawling estate, with its manicured gardens and stately architecture, was home to the Reeds, a family known for their wealth and social standing. It was a special place for Samantha, who had spent her best childhood moments there. Inside, the halls echoed with the footsteps of both family and staff, a constant hum of activity underlying the opulence. Lily Martinez, part of the household yet a part in her dreams, navigated these corridors daily, her family intertwined with the reeds through years of service. At 21, Lily Martinez was on a mission to transform her life through art, Growing up in the Reed household, she saw a world of possibilities beyond her family's service role. Enrolled in an art course, Lily aimed for a future at San Diego State University's School of Arts and Design. Her passion for art wasn't just a pursuit of personal fulfillment, but a tribute to her family's legacy of hard work and sacrifice. Lily's dream was clear, to leave her mark on the world through creativity and expression. As Lily prepared to leave for her art course, a sharp exchange stopped her in her tracks. It was Mr. James Reed, Samantha's father, his voice cutting through the air with a mix of frustration and disappointment. Carlos, Lily's father, a man dedicated to his work for the Reed family, but now bedridden, became the unwitting target of Mr. Reed's ire. I needed that tuxedo yesterday, Mr. Reed's voice boomed, echoing off the walls. How can you be so irresponsible to fall ill at a time like this? Lily peered around the corner, witnessing the scene unfold. Her mother, busy in the kitchen and unable to assist, left a void that Mr. Reed was all too quick to criticize. It's not as if he chose to be sick, 
Lily's mother's voice came faintly, a mix of defense and resignation. Mr. Reed paced the room, his movements sharp and erratic, the embodiment of a man burdened by the demands of his status and the imperfections of reality. This is unacceptable. With everything that's happening, the last thing I need is for simple tasks to be neglected. It was then that Lily stepped forward, her presence announcing itself with a quiet confidence. Mr. Reed, I'll take care of the tuxedo. I can pick it up from the tailor on my way back from my class. Mr. Reed turned towards her, his gaze sharp, analyzing. For a moment, the room held its breath, the tension palpable. Then his posture softened slightly, a begrudging acceptance in his nod. Very well, Lily, see that you do. It's imperative everything goes smoothly from here on out. Lily nodded, her heart racing with the weight of the responsibility now placed on her shoulders. Of course, Mr. Reed, I'll make sure of it. After Lily departed, the air within the household buzzed with the anticipation and stress of the upcoming welcome party. Lily's mother, Maria, caught in the whirlwind of preparations, realized the necessity for additional hands, and immediately thought of her husband's younger brother, Marco. With a sense of urgency, she reached out to him, hoping for his reliable assistance in this family moment. However, the response she received was not what she expected. I'm really sorry, Maria. Marco's voice came through, tinged with genuine regret. One of my cows is expecting, and it's a tricky situation. I can't leave her side, it's too risky for both her and the calf. Maria's heart sank at his refusal. The party preparations were overwhelming, and with Carlos's health declining, marked by his persistent coughs and sickness, she felt cornered and desperate. Marco, please, she implored, her voice laced with worry. Carlos hasn't been well, and his condition is worsening. We really could use your help. It's all hands on deck here. Marco, torn between his commitment to his farm and his deep-seated loyalty to the Martinez family, faced a poignant dilemma. This predicament highlighted the delicate balance between personal responsibilities and the duty to support those he held dear, especially Lily, for whom his feelings ran deeper than mere familial affection. His love for Lily added a layer of complexity to his decision, making the call for Maria all the more compelling. This emotional pull played a significant role in Marco's contemplation as he weighed his duties against the pull of his affections, setting the stage for a choice that would test the limits of his priorities. The tailor shop nestled on a quaint street corner of San Diego, its facade a charming blend of old-world craftsmanship and modern chic. The exterior, adorned with a vintage sign that read, Fine Tailoring, beckoned passers-by with the promise of meticulous care and unparalleled service. The large, paneled windows showcased an array of fabrics and designs, from classic suits to avant-garde pieces, each telling a story of tradition and innovation. Flower boxes under the windows added a splash of color, their blooms swaying gently in the coastal breeze. Ethan approached the shop in a buoyant mood, the sunlight dappling through the palm trees lining the street. His return to San Diego had rekindled a sense of nostalgia, and the prospect of exploring the city's local businesses filled him with a pleasant anticipation. As he neared the entrance, the door swung open, and Lily emerged, her expression clouded, her pace brisk. It was a stark contrast to Ethan's leisurely approach. Instinctively, Ethan reached out, holding the door open wider for her. After you, he said, a smile playing on his lips, his tone imbued with a gentle chivalry. Lily, however, was not in the mood for pleasantries. I don't need you to hold the door for me, she snapped, her frustration evident. I can open doors for myself, thank you very much. Ethan, taken aback by her response, couldn't help but tease. Oh, becoming quite the gender equality advocate, aren't we? His comment, though light-hearted, only served to fan the flames of Lily's irritation. And you, Lily retorted, her voice laced with sarcasm. You sound exactly like one of those New Yorkers who think they're so charming. Her mimicry of his accent, though exaggerated, was not without a certain playful precision. Realizing he might have overstepped, Ethan's expression softened. I'm sorry, he offered sincerely. I didn't mean to be rude. 
How can I make it up to you? Lily's response was swift and laced with sarcasm. Oh, I don't know. Marry me. Her words hung in the air, a challenge and a jest all at once. Ethan's earlier confidence momentarily eclipsed by her unexpected proposition. You mean that? he asked, his curiosity piqued. Of course, Lily shot back with a smirk, because clearly there are no other men left on earth. With that, she turned on her heel, leaving Ethan standing, a mix of shock and amusement in his eyes. As Ethan proceeded into the tailor shop, his mind was unexpectedly anchored to the fleeting moment with Lily. The initial spark of irritation from their exchange had quickly transformed into something far deeper, a budding curiosity that tugged at the edges of his heart. There was an undeniable force in her spirited defiance, a vibrancy that Ethan found himself drawn to, inexplicably and irresistibly. He had encountered many people in his life, each leaving varying impressions, yet none had managed to stir within him what Lily did in those brief moments. It was her fierce independence, her fiery wit, that seemed to challenge him, to call to a part of him he hadn't realized was longing for such an encounter. As he selected fabrics and discussed fittings with the tailor, Ethan's thoughts drifted, unbidden, back to Lily. Her image, vivid and compelling, danced before his eyes, a testament to the impact she had made. The welcome home party for Ethan and Samantha was a vibrant affair, set against the backdrop of the Reed's expansive and elegantly adorned estate. The atmosphere was alive with the hum of conversation, laughter, and music as guests mingled, exchanging greetings and well wishes. The garden was transformed into a splendid venue, with twinkling lights strung across meticulously trimmed hedges, casting a warm glow over the faces of the attendees. A table laden with an array of exquisite dishes and fine wines stood at the center, testament to the reed's renowned hospitality. However, amidst the joy and celebration, there was a notable absence. Ethan's mother remained secluded in her room, a space stark with loneliness, untouched by the festivity that enveloped the household. In the midst of this, Lily was a whirlwind of activity, her presence almost ethereal as she dashed about, fulfilling her father's tasks. Marco's absence meant she had additional responsibilities, driving to the depot to retrieve necessities for the household. This hustle ensured she wouldn't cross paths with Ethan, and even when she did return, her focus allowed her to walk past him without a moment's hesitation. Ethan, however, turned, sensing a familiar presence, but the moment passed unacknowledged. As the evening wore on, Samantha, buoyed by the spirited encouragement of the aunts and the liberality of the wine, found herself speaking into the microphone. Everyone, if I could have your attention, please. Samantha started, her words slightly slurred but full of emotion. Tonight we're all here to celebrate Ethan's return, but there's something more, something very special I want to share with all of you. She paused, looking around at the faces turned towards her, finding Ethan's eyes in the crowd. So, here, in front of everyone we love and care about, I want to say, I adore you, Ethan, more than words can express. And... She paused for effect, a mischievous yet sincere smile playing on her lips. We're going to get married. Soon. Her words, though slurred, were heartfelt as she proclaimed her adoration for Ethan and announced their impending marriage, leaving Ethan stunned and the guests in a murmur of surprise. His reaction was swift. The shock and the public nature of Samantha's declaration drove him to leave the party in a flurry of mixed emotions. After the last of the guests had left, and the vibrant echoes of the party began to subside into the night. Lily and her mother, Maria, stood side by side, tackling the mountain of dishes left in the wake of the celebration. As they worked, their talk naturally drifted to the events of the evening, particularly Samantha's heartfelt, albeit surprising, announcement. Lily, her curiosity piqued, found herself inquiring about Ethan, the man at the center of Samantha's public declaration of love. Her knowledge of Ethan was a tapestry of childhood memories and stories overheard, none of which painted a clear picture of the man he had become. It's Ethan, Maria said, her voice carrying a mix of nostalgia and affection as she confirmed Samantha's future husband's identity. You remember Ethan, don't you? He and Samantha were always inseparable, even as kids. I... 
I had a crush on him, you know, Lily admitted almost sheepishly, her confession floating softly between them. Back when we were kids, I used to see him around when he came to play with Samantha. He was my first crush. Maria paused, looking at her daughter with a mixture of surprise and understanding. She laughed gently at Lily's confession, but was quick to ground her daughter in the reality of their social standing. We are servants, Lily. Ethan's world, his class. It's miles apart from ours, she said, her voice tinged with a hard-earned wisdom. It's best to forget about such fairy tales and focus on the real world, my dear. The penthouse, perched atop one of San Diego's sleek high-rises, offered a breathtaking view of the city below. Its spacious interior was elegantly furnished, with floor-to-ceiling windows framing the skyline, casting the room in a soft, ambient light. Modern art adorned the walls, and the open-plan living area flowed seamlessly into a sleek, well-appointed kitchen. It was a sanctuary of luxury and tranquility, a stark contrast to the emotional storm about to unfold within its walls. Ethan was there, lost in thought, when Samantha burst through the door, her steps unsteady, her laughter a sharp note in the quiet. The air between them crackled with tension as Ethan confronted her about the public declaration of marriage she had made at the party. It was selfish, Sam. Making announcements about us, about marriage, without even talking to me first, he accused, his frustration plain. Samantha, her judgment clouded by alcohol, retorted with equal fervor, And what about your jokes, Ethan? Always making jokes, but your aunts told me you're serious about your words. Maybe I just took you at your word for once. Her voice rose, tinged with drunken bravado. The argument escalated, their words cutting through the air, until Samantha, in a dramatic flourish, proclaimed, I die for you, Ethan. You're such a catch with your education and everything. Any woman would be lucky to have you. Her movements were exaggerated, a clear indication of her inebriated state, betraying a light-mindedness that Ethan had often overlooked. As the intensity of their exchange waned, Ethan's resolve softened. Seeking to quell the storm between them, he poured them both a glass of wine, the rich red liquid a temporary balm to their frayed nerves. What followed was a physical union devoid of emotion, a mechanical act of intimacy that left both feeling more isolated than before. Afterward, Ethan found himself adrift in a sea of contemplation. The penthouse, once a haven, now felt suffocating, the remnants of their argument and hollow reconciliation hanging heavy in the air. Seeking solace, he stepped out into the night, the cool breeze a welcome relief against his skin. The city stretched out before him, its lights a distant reminder of the world beyond their complex entanglements. As he breathed in the fresh air, Ethan was consumed by a deep sense of introspection, pondering the tangled web of feelings, obligations, and the future that lay ahead. Ah! The morning light crept through the curtains of the penthouse, illuminating the remnants of last night's turmoil. Ethan awoke to a heavy silence, his thoughts a tangle of regret and confusion. The events of the previous evening with Samantha weighed heavily on him, casting a shadow over the start of his day. Amidst the lingering sadness, a fleeting memory of Lily from the tailor shop sparked an unexpected lightness in his heart. Her vibrant presence, the brief encounter they had shared, offered a momentary escape from his current predicament. Driven by a newfound resolve, Ethan decided he needed to see her again, to recapture that brief moment of connection. Heading to the tailor shop, Ethan approached the counter, his request met with a firm refusal from the girl working there. Hi, I need a bit of help, Ethan began, his tone earnest. I met someone here yesterday, a woman, but I didn't catch her name. She was memorable. We had a bit of an exchange, and I'd like to reach out, apologize maybe. I'm sorry, but I can't give out personal information. It's our policy, she stated, unmoved by Ethan's plea. Ethan, undeterred, crafted a story in desperation. You see, she and I had plans for dinner, but I've lost her number. She's expecting me to call. His voice carried a hint of urgency, hoping to sway her decision. The girl, sympathetic yet hesitant, glanced through her books, her search yielding no results. I'm sorry, I can't find any female customers from yesterday here, she admitted, the confusion evident in her tone. Recalling a detail, she mentioned, 
Yesterday wasn't my shift. It was the owner, Mr. Thompson, who was here. Maybe he knows. Ethan's hope was reignited at the mention of the owner. Waiting patiently for Mr. Thompson to arrive, he repeated his request, only to be met with a similar response. I don't recall anyone, I'm afraid, Mr. Thompson confessed, his memory offering no assistance. The lack of video surveillance in the shop further dampened Ethan's spirits, a dead end in his quest to find Lily. However, a glimmer of hope emerged when Mr. Thompson remembered a detail about Mr. Reed's tuxedo being collected by someone other than Lily's father. Providing the work number for the Reed household, he suggested Ethan try there. Grateful for this lead, Ethan stepped outside, dialing the number with a mixture of anticipation and nervousness. The phone rang, and to his surprise, Lily answered, her voice tense and preoccupied. Hello, she answered, her tone rushed. Ethan cleared his throat, trying to sound confident. Hi, we met at the tailor shop yesterday, the New York guy. I was hoping to catch up and make it up to you, maybe over dinner. There was a brief pause before Lily responded, her voice laced with impatience. Look, I don't know who you are, but this really isn't a good time. I'm super busy, and I'm not interested in whatever this is. Please, don't call here again, she replied curtly, her words a swift dismissal. Ethan was taken aback, his attempt at connection rebuffed so harshly. The rejection stung, wounding his pride and leaving him to grapple with the realization that his feelings, however fleeting, were not reciprocated. In the bustling Reed household, the day was a flurry of activity as the aftermath of the party was tidied away. Amidst this, Maria, Lily's mother, greeted Marco warmly as he arrived, arms laden with fresh produce and special melons he had picked out just for Lily. Marco, you're a sight for sore eyes, Maria welcomed him, though the party's winded down and you're a tad late. Marco chuckled setting down his bounty on the kitchen counter. I figured as much. Sorry, the cows had me tied up longer than expected, but I've brought plenty of fresh food. Thought it might still come in handy. Maria smiled, appreciating his thoughtfulness. It's always a help, Marco. Thank you. Lily, catching sight of Marco, couldn't hide her excitement. His presence meant she could finally attend her art courses without worry, giving her much-needed time for her studies. Marco, you brought melons, Lily exclaimed, her eyes lighting up. Yeah, for you, Marco said, handing them to her with a grin. And, Maria, if it's all right with you, I was thinking of taking Lily to my farm. Maybe even marry her if she'll have me, he shouted, half joking, half serious. Maria laughed, shaking her head at Marco's boldness. We'll have to think about that one, won't we? Lily handed Marco the household phone, quickly running through a list of tasks and duties he'd need to cover. With everything settled, they gathered around the table for lunch, the atmosphere light and filled with laughter, a stark contrast to the morning's hustle. Make sure you take good care of those melons, Lily teased Marco as they sat down to eat. I will if you promise to consider my proposal, Marco teased back, a hopeful note in his voice. Maria just shook her head, smiling at their banter. Eat up. We've got plenty to do after this. As Marco, Maria, and Lily were sitting down for lunch, enjoying a moment of peace, the phone rang, slicing through the tranquility of the Reed household. Marco, with a glance at Lily, picked up the receiver, his expression turning from relaxed to rigid as Ethan's voice came through, asking to speak with the woman he'd talked to earlier. Marco's protective instincts flared up, especially given his feelings for Lily. Who the heck do you think you are, huh? Call in here asking for her like you know her. Marco's voice was tinged with a rural edge, his accent thickening with each word. Ethan, confused, tried to explain. I just need to speak with her. It's important. Marco cut him off, his patience worn thin. Important? You don't even know her name, amigo. Why don't you come here and say that to my face, eh? The tension escalated quickly with Ethan attempting to reason, but Marco's anger overshadowing the conversation. I'm not scared of you. You want to sort this out? Then let's do it! Marco challenged, his voice loud enough for Maria and Lily to hear every word. Finally, 
With a huff of frustration, Marco slammed the phone down, ending the call abruptly. Maria and Lily, who had been silent spectators, exchanged worried glances. What was that about, Marco? Maria's voice was calm, trying to diffuse the tension. Marco turned to Lily, his expression a mix of confusion and anger. Lily, que pasa? Who is this guy? I'll handle it. Lily took the phone from Marco, jotting down Ethan's number before calling him back. Hey, listen here, I don't know what you think this is, but you're way out of line. Call here again, and I'm calling the police. Lily's voice was firm, her threat clear. Ethan's reply was equally stubborn. Call them if you want, but I just want to meet you once. After that, I'll leave you alone. Fine, five minutes, after my course, but this is it, you got it? Then you're going to leave me alone. Lily agreed, more to end the conversation than anything else. Okay, okay, Ethan said, a note of victory in his voice. After hanging up the phone, Lily turned to Marco, her expression a mix of frustration and disappointment. The lunchtime atmosphere had shifted dramatically, the previous harmony disrupted by the heated exchange. Marco, what were you thinking? Arguing and fighting over the phone like that. You don't even know who's on the other end. It could be one of our vendors or someone respectable, Lily chided, her voice firm yet concerned. Marco looked taken aback, not used to being reprimanded by Lily. I... I was just trying to protect you, he muttered, his usual confidence dampened by her disapproval. Lily sighed, her frustration softening as she saw his intention, misguided as it was. You have to keep your manners. We can't afford to make enemies or upset important people. Marco nodded, chastened, his earlier anger dissipating under Lily's admonishment. You're right, Lily. Lo siento. I'll be more careful next time, he promised, his apology sincere. Lily, with her art supplies clutched tightly, rushed out of her class, the anticipation of the upcoming meeting pushing her forward. She arrived at the Filipino restaurant where Ethan was already seated, trying to blend in with the casual atmosphere in his modest attire. As she approached, Ethan looked up, a tentative smile on his face. I got myself something to eat, but please feel free to order whatever you like, he offered, gesturing to the menu. Lily, her mind still racing from the events of the day, shook her head. No, thank you, she replied, taking a seat across from him. They launched into conversation, skirting around personal details, including the sharing of names. Mid-conversation, Ethan stood to retrieve his order. As he turned back to Lily, a cleaning woman, her cart overflowing, accidentally collided with him, sending his coffee splashing across his clothes. Watch where you're going! Lily exclaimed, her protectiveness flaring up as she directed her frustration at the cleaning woman. The manager rushed over, Apologies falling from his lips as he took in the scene. His next words were swift and harsh. I'm so sorry, this is unacceptable, he said to the cleaning woman. Ethan, coffee dripping from his shirt, intervened. No, please, it was just an accident, I was in the way. The manager paused, taken aback by Ethan's reaction, while the cleaning woman looked on, grateful for the unexpected support. With the situation somewhat resolved, but the mood ruined, Ethan and Lily decided to leave the restaurant without eating. They found themselves sitting on a bench in the nearby community park, the quiet surrounding them a stark contrast to the restaurant's chaos. As Ethan dabbed at his shirt with some napkins, Lily couldn't help but break the silence. You didn't have to do that, you know. Stand up for her, I mean. Ethan looked up, meeting her eyes. It was the right thing to do. Accidents happen. Ethan and Lily found themselves seated on a bench in the community park, directly across from the bustling art class and the Filipino restaurant where their earlier encounter had taken a spill. To one side, the recreation center buzzed with activity, while the senior center at the corner stood quietly, a contrast to the lively scene before it. As they settled into the calm, Lily, noticing the coffee stain still marking Ethan's face, gently reached out with her napkin. You missed a spot, she said with a smile, her hand lightly brushing his cheek. Ethan laughed, the tension from the restaurant incident washing away in the serenity of the park. From her backpack, Lily produced a sandwich wrapped neatly. Here, 
You didn't get to eat because of me, she offered, handing it to him. Gratefully, Ethan began to eat, the simple act of bridge to normalcy after their unusual day. The heat of the day, however, soon became too much, prompting Ethan to remove his coffee-stained shirt, intent on cleaning it properly. Finding a water spot nearby, he started rinsing it out, his actions drawing amused comments from Lily. You look like you're more used to boardrooms than laundry, Lily teased, her laughter ringing clear in the open space. Ethan, embracing the moment, scooped up some water in his hands and playfully dashed towards Lily, threatening to drench her. She squealed, darting away, and what followed was a playful chase around the park, both of them running and laughing like children, free from the complexities of their lives for just a moment. Their joy was palpable, a bubble of happiness in the ordinary world, until a familiar figure emerged from the senior center. Aunt Helen, having visited someone inside, stopped dead in her tracks at the sight of Ethan and a woman she didn't recognize, engaged in such carefree antics. Drawing closer, she greeted them, her curiosity piqued. Ethan, what a surprise to see you here. And how is Samantha doing? She inquired, her tone casual yet probing. Ethan, catching his breath, managed to smile. Everything's okay, Aunt Helen. Just enjoying the park, he replied, the simplicity of his answer masking the complexity of his emotions. Aunt Helen nodded, accepting his response at face value. I was just visiting someone at the senior center, she explained, her visit to the park now given context. With an examining glance at Lily, she bid them goodbye, leaving the park with a wave. The unexpected encounter with Aunt Helen served as a catalyst, snapping Lily back to a harsh reality. She halted her playful chase, her laughter fading as she turned to Ethan with a sudden urgency. Wait, you're Ethan? Ethan Grant? Lily's voice quivered slightly, piecing together the man's identity with the memories of her childhood. Ethan, taken aback by her reaction, nodded. Yes, I'm Ethan. And you are? Lily. Lily Martinez. My parents are Maria and Carlos. You must remember them. They work at the Reed Estate, she explained, her tone shifting from warmth to a guarded coldness. Recognition dawned on Ethan's face. Lily, of course, I remember you. You've changed a lot. But the nostalgia was short-lived. Lily's stance became defensive, her previous ease replaced by accusation. You're about to marry Samantha Reed, right? What are we even doing here? This is highly inappropriate. Ethan, realizing the gravity of the misunderstanding, attempted to clarify. Hold on, Lily. The thing with Samantha, it's complicated. We're not actually getting married. That announcement was a misunderstanding. Lily, however, wasn't easily placated. Complicated? You're engaged, Ethan, and here you are in a public park with me. What would people think? This could ruin both of our families. Ethan stepped closer, his voice earnest. Listen to me, Lily. There's no engagement. Samantha and I, we've been friends since we were kids, but that's all it is. You should know this. The party got out of hand, but there's no wedding. But Lily's anger and fear overshadowed her willingness to listen. Friends? Ethan, even the hint of scandal could destroy my family. We're just the help, remember? I can't be seen like this with you. It's not right. Ethan's frustration grew, mirroring Lily's. Lily, you're not just the help to me. Can't you see? I'm trying to sort this out. But Lily was resolute, her decision firm amidst the turmoil of emotions. I have to go, Ethan. This was a mistake. We shouldn't see each other again. In the peaceful surroundings of her mother's mansion, Samantha Reed found herself enveloped in a calm that belied the turmoil of recent events. She acknowledged with a heavy heart the chaos her impulsive announcement had caused, the ripples of which had disturbed the peace of not just her life, but Ethan's as well. As she pondered how to mend the situation, her thoughts were interrupted by an urgent call from Helen and Julia. With a sense of resolve, she invited them over, hoping their wisdom could guide her through the mess she felt responsible for. Upon their arrival, the mansion, with its elegant decor and sprawling gardens, offered a backdrop of tranquility as the family gathered. However, the calm was short-lived, as the aunts, without delay, broached the subject at the forefront of everyone's minds. 
What's happening with you and Ethan, dear? The marriage announcement took us all by surprise, Aunt Helen inquired, her tone a mix of concern and curiosity. Samantha sighed, the weight of her actions pressing down on her. I think I've made a mess of things. Ethan is quite upset with me now. It seems unlikely we'll marry, she confessed, her voice tinged with regret. As they delved deeper into conversation, Lily, moving towards the kitchen outside, caught Aunt Helen's eye through the windows. Who is that girl? I feel like I've seen her before, she asked, her curiosity piqued. Samantha hesitated for a moment before sharing Lily's story. That's Lily, Maria and Carlos's daughter. Life hasn't been exactly easy for her. She's always trying to balance what she dreams of doing against what her situation at home allows her to do. It's like she's caught between wanting to fly and being tethered to the ground. Helen exchanged a knowing look with Julia, a silent communication passing between them before turning back to Samantha. You know, dear, perhaps it's time to consider moving forward more decisively with Ethan, especially now with our plans to transfer the company to him, Helen suggested gently, yet with an underlying firmness. The conversation shifted then to Ethan's mother, a topic Samantha had been anxious about. How is Ethan's mom doing? She asked, concern evident in her voice. She's doing better, started eating some, Julia responded with a small smile. It's a relief to us all. As the meeting with her aunts wrapped up, a new plan began to form in Samantha's mind, fueled by their subtle manipulations. She was determined to seek Claire's blessing for her and Ethan, convinced it was the key to resolving the tension between them. Despite Ethan's recent guilt-ridden encounter with Lily, he couldn't find it in himself to refuse Samantha, still caught in the web of obligation and past promises. On the day of the visit to Ethan's mother's mansion, the air was thick with anticipation. Ethan and Samantha approached Claire cautiously, the atmosphere charged with expectation. As they drew near, Claire's eyes welled with tears, a reaction everyone initially mistook for joy. But Claire was crying out of pain. Claire's response was a heart-wrenching display of anguish. Recognizing Samantha, she began to sob, her body shaking with silent cries. Though she yearned to voice her concerns, her vow of silence in the presence of others stifled her attempts, leaving her trapped in her own turmoil. The situation escalated when Samantha's parents, oblivious to the charged atmosphere, approached with casual smiles. Their arrival acted as a catalyst, deepening Claire's distress. The sight of them triggered a visible panic in Claire. Her silent sobs turned into muffled cries of despair, the sounds of someone fighting a battle within. The aunts, Helen and Julia, exchanged anxious glances, well aware of Claire's delicate condition. Claire, it's okay, we're here, they tried to reassure her, their attempts to soothe her proving futile against the tide of her emotions. As Samantha's parents drew closer, Claire's state deteriorated rapidly. The floodgates of her pent-up frustration and anger burst open, manifesting in a physical struggle against her own body. Without a word, she collapsed, her silent world crumbling around her. Reacting instinctively, Ethan lifted his mother into his arms, his voice laced with panic. We need to get her to the clinic, immediately, he announced, cutting through the thick air of uncertainty. At the clinic, the atmosphere was a blend of clinical efficiency and a palpable tension that hung over Ethan and his aunts as they awaited news on Claire's condition. The clinic's specialists worked swiftly to calm Claire, administering droppers to ease her into a state of tranquility. The waiting room, with its muted colors and soft, ambient noise, offered a stark contrast to the storm of emotions Ethan and his aunts carried with them. Seated in a corner of the clinic's small cafeteria, Ethan and his aunts found themselves amidst a spread of snacks, the mundane act of eating doing little to distract from the weight of the situation. Initially, Ethan was reluctant to delve into discussions of the past, preferring the silence to the dredging up of painful memories. It was Aunt Helen who first broke the silence, her voice a gentle nudge into the past they all tried to avoid. Ethan, dear, it's not as black and white as we've made it out to be over the years, she started her eyes meeting his. Your dad, Michael, he was struggling more than any of us knew. He started drinking because of unknown reasons. A lot. 
Ethan shifted uncomfortably, the mention of his father's habits opening old wounds. But that doesn't explain everything. Mom stopped her medication. That's what triggered the whole... accident. Julia leaned forward, her voice soft but insistent. She did stop, yes. But those pills were making her life unbearable. She just wanted to feel something again, even if it meant feeling too much. And when she stopped, the day your father rushed out, it was because she was having a seizure. He was panicked, Ethan. Ethan's defenses began to waver, his brows knitting together as he processed Julia's words. He wouldn't have driven if he was drunk, though. He knew better. He was trying to save her, to be the hero. Helen's sigh was heavy, laden with the truth yet to be shared. That's just it, Ethan. The police reports showed otherwise. Michael was far beyond any reasonable measure. The staff begged him not to drive, but he insisted. He thought he could handle it, but... The revelation hit Ethan like a physical blow, his breath hitching as the pieces fell into place. So, he was drunk? Drunk, drunk? His voice was barely a whisper, disbelief and realization mingling in his eyes. Yes, love, Helen confirmed, her hand reaching out to clasp his. It was a tragedy, but not for the reasons we've been holding on to. Your father made a choice. A terrible mistake, but it wasn't Claire's fault for needing help or stopping her medication. Ethan's world, built on a foundation of misplaced blame and anger towards his mother, began to crumble. Tears welled up as he grappled with the enormity of his misconceptions. I, I've been wrong this whole time, blaming her when it was Dad who, I can't believe. Allowing the truth to wash over him, Ethan felt a profound sense of guilt for the years of resentment he harbored against Claire. With a heavy heart, he stood, compelled by a newfound need for reconciliation, and made his way to his mother's room. Kneeling beside her bed, he let the tears flow freely. Mom, I'm so sorry. I didn't know the whole story. I've blamed you, and I was so wrong. Please, can you forgive me? His voice broke with the weight of his apology, a son's plea for understanding. Claire, silent as always, offered no immediate response, her condition rendering her unable to speak the forgiveness Ethan so desperately sought. Yet, as he continued to cry, her hand slowly, almost hesitantly, moved to rest on his head. In that gentle touch, Ethan felt the barriers between them begin to dissolve, a silent acknowledgement of his apology and a step towards healing the wounds of the past. Ethan's journey back to his penthouse was a blur, tears clouding his vision as he navigated the streets, the weight of his revelations pressing heavily upon him. Upon arrival, he found Samantha there, waiting, the air between them charged with the tension of unspoken words and unresolved issues. I spoke to my mom, Samantha, Ethan began, his voice cracking with emotion. I... I forgave her, and I realized I need to be there for her, now more than ever. Samantha, sensing his distress, poured him a glass of wine, an attempt to offer comfort. Ethan, I'm glad you could find some peace with your mother, she said, her tone softening. But as the wine took hold and Ethan's thoughts spiraled, he couldn't help but connect the dots between their visit and his mother's breakdown. This whole mess, going to see my mom, bringing your parents into it. It triggered something in her, Samantha. It's like it was all set up to push her over the edge. Samantha bristled at the accusation, her response sharp and defensive. What are you saying, Ethan? That I orchestrated this? Your aunts were the ones pushing for it. They practically convinced me it was the right thing to do. Ethan, fueled by frustration and alcohol, retorted, But you didn't think it through. You just went along with it, without considering the consequences. It's always like this with you. Samantha, now angered, shot back. So now it's my fault? Your aunts have been meddling and manipulating, and I'm the one to blame? The argument escalated quickly, their words sharp and cutting, revealing deeper rifts in their relationship. Ethan, feeling trapped and misunderstood, lashed out further. You're reckless, Samantha. You jump into things without thinking. It's dangerous. And you? Samantha countered, her own anger flaring. 
are just as blind, always looking for someone else to blame for your problems. Unable to find common ground and overwhelmed by a mix of guilt, grief, and alcohol, Ethan made a decision. I can't do this, he muttered, standing unsteadily. Not now. With those final words, he left the penthouse, the door closing behind him with a sense of finality. The night swallowed him whole, his steps unsteady as he walked away, leaving behind the fractured pieces of a relationship teetering on the edge of collapse. In a whirlwind of emotion and under the influence of alcohol, Ethan found himself at the gates of the Reed estate, desperation and love driving him to shout into the darkness for Lily. Lily! Lily! I think I'm in love with you! He shouted into the night, his voice filled with a raw, unbridled passion that refused to be silenced. This outburst was met not by Lily, but by Marco, emerging from the estate with a protective fury. What are you doing here, shouting like a madman? Marco's voice was rough, a clear warning in his tone. Ethan, fueled by his feelings and the night's earlier revelations, stood his ground. I need to see Lily. It's important, he insisted, stumbling forward, his resolve clear despite the alcohol clouding his senses. Marco, ever protective of Lily and provoked by Ethan's presence on his turf, responded with a palpable threat. Lily belongs to me. You got no business here, he growled, stepping menacingly closer to Ethan. The tension between the two men escalated quickly, their words giving way to physical confrontation. Fists flew, driven by jealousy and love, until the arrival of the police interrupted their brawl. The officer swiftly intervened, handcuffing Ethan and Marco and escorting them away to the station, their night of passion ending in the stark, cold reality of a cell. Upon receiving news of their arrest, the aunts hurried to the station, their minds racing with strategies to resolve the situation. They paid the necessary bail, securing the release of both Ethan and Marco, their expressions a mix of relief and strategic calculation. Once ants acknowledge Marco's feelings towards Lily, they quickly whisper to each other and decide to use this opportunity and let Marco take Lily away from San Diego to his ranch. They talked to Marco in private and made their financial proposal. Marco, his pride bruised but his resolve unshaken, made it clear to the aunts. I don't need your help or your money. I'll figure this out on my own, he declared firmly, his pride evident in his stance. The aunts, however, saw an opportunity in the complexity of the situation. Marco, we understand you love Lily, and we respect that, but we also see a chance here to ensure you two can start off on the right foot without any financial strain. Despite their compelling argument, Marco's response was steeped in defiance. I can take care of everything. Lily doesn't need your charity, and neither do I, he retorted, his voice laced with determination. Recognizing his resistance, the aunts offered a softer approach. Think it over, Marco. We're here to help, not to interfere. Let's talk again when you've had some time to cool down, they suggested, hoping to revisit the conversation under less tense circumstances. With Ethan sent home to sober up and reflect, and Marco left to consider the aunt's proposition, the night's events left all parties at a crossroads, their futures intertwined yet uncertain, the promise of a new day bringing with it the possibility of resolution or further discord. The morning after the chaotic events, Samantha's world was further shaken by a call from her mother, who had news that set the day on a tumultuous path. Ethan made quite the scene here last night shouting declarations of love for Lily, of all things. And believe it or not, we've had to collect phones from the staff who captured his performance, her mother explained, a tone of disbelief and disapproval threading through her words. Arriving at the Reed estate, Samantha didn't bother to mask her fury as she confronted Maria and Lily. Really? This is what it's come to? Ethan declares his love for Lily, and none of you thought to stop this farce? Her voice was laced with sarcasm and hurt, her accusations pointed and sharp. Maria, caught off guard by the intensity of Samantha's anger, attempted to interject, Samantha, please, let's talk about this calmly. But Samantha was beyond reason, her emotions boiling over. Calmly? 
After what your daughter has done, she's made a mockery of my relationship with Ethan, and you think we can discuss this calmly? She paced the room, her every word dripping with accusation. It was Lily's protective instinct that finally met Samantha's rage head on. You have no right to come here and attack my mother, Lily retorted, her own anger flaring in defense of Maria. The heated exchange quickly escalated, with Samantha and Lily entangled in a physical altercation, their emotions manifesting in a flurry of grasping and pulling. It took Maria's strength and resolve to pull them apart, her voice a calming force amidst the storm. Enough! This solves nothing, she pleaded, looking from Samantha to Lily with a mix of disappointment and resolve. Breathing heavily, Samantha's eyes blazed with unshed tears, her emotional charge undiminished. You've turned this into a circus, Lily. And you, Maria, you let it happen under your roof. I thought you were better than this, she spat out, her words heavy with betrayal. Maria, ever the peacemaker, offered an apology and a promise to rectify the situation. I'm truly sorry, Samantha. I assure you, we will make this right. Please, let's not let this escalate further. With the tension simmering but unresolved, Samantha stormed off, returning to her penthouse where solitude and alcohol became her companions. After Samantha's departure, the tension within the Reed estate didn't dissipate. Instead, it shifted focus as Maria turned to Lily, her disappointment and concern manifesting in a stern reprimand. Lily, how could you be so reckless? I've warned you about the dangers of getting involved with someone like Ethan. You know the difference in our social standings. To him, you're just a diversion, a toy. Maria's voice was harsh, a reflection of her fear for her daughter's future. Lily, taken aback by her mother's blunt assessment, tried to defend herself. Mom, it's not like that. Ethan. Enough, Lily! Maria cut her off, her words sharp as knives. You've put this family in a difficult position. Do you think his family will ever accept you? Do you think you can just step into his world without consequences? The room fell silent, the weight of Maria's words hanging heavy in the air. It was Marco who broke the silence, his tone serious, his intention clear. Maria, let me take Lily to my ranch. We can get away from all this mess. I can take care of her. Maria, however, was quick to refuse. No, Marco, that's not the solution. Lily needs to understand the gravity of her actions, not run away from them. Lily felt a surge of indignation. I'm not some animal you can just take to solve a problem, Marco, she exclaimed, her voice trembling with emotion. And I'm not a problem that needs to be hidden away. Maria, witnessing Lily's outburst, made a difficult decision. Lily, if you can't see reason, then you leave me no choice. You either go with Marco or you leave this house for good. I won't have you tarnishing this family's name any further. Lily, her heart breaking under the weight of her mother's ultimatum, made a defiant choice. If those are my only options, then I choose neither. I'd rather live on the streets than be trapped with Marco or under your control. With those final pained words, Lily grabbed her backpack, the symbol of her sudden stark independence, and left the place that had been her home. The door closed behind her with a quiet finality, leaving Maria and Marco in the echo of her departure, each grappling with the consequences of their demands and the realization of what they had just lost. Ethan, wrestling with his thoughts and the weight of the day's events, picked up his phone around 11 p.m. The screen's glow in the dim light of his penthouse felt stark as he composed a message to Lily, his fingers hesitant but driven by a need for reconciliation. Hey, Lily, I'm really sorry about everything. I didn't mean to cause you any trouble or disrupt your peace. I hope you can forgive me. After a moment that felt like an eternity, his phone buzzed with Lily's response, a simple text that carried a world of meaning. It makes no difference now. Stunned by the brevity and the undertones of her message, Ethan's concern deepened. What do you mean? Are you okay? What's happening? Lily's reply was a sharp pang in his heart. I'm leaving San Diego. I don't know where I'm going. Actually, nowhere. I'm officially homeless now. Without a second thought, Ethan called her, needing to hear her voice, to understand the gravity of her words. Lily answered, 
her voice a mixture of resignation and defiance as she recounted the aftermath of Samantha's visit and the resulting conflict that led to her being cast out. Where are you right now? Ethan's voice was urgent, his mind racing with worry. I'm at Mira Mesa Park, Lily said, her voice barely above a whisper, betraying her vulnerability. Ethan didn't hesitate. He ended the call and dashed out of the penthouse, determination fueling his steps as he headed straight for Mira Mesa Park, desperate to find Lily and offer whatever help he could. Unbeknownst to him, Samantha, driven by a mix of suspicion and curiosity, followed quietly behind, intent on discovering where Ethan's sudden departure would lead him. Upon reaching Mira Mesa Park, Ethan's heart raced as he scanned the area, finally spotting Lily sitting alone on a bench, her figure small and forlorn in the dim park lighting. Without a moment's hesitation, he approached her, wrapping her in a comforting embrace as she broke down, her tears a testament to the turmoil she had endured. I was so scared, Ethan. I didn't know where to go or what to do, Lily confessed between sobs, her voice muffled against his shoulder. Her vulnerability, laid bare in the cool night air, drew Ethan closer, his desire to protect and comfort her overwhelming. In a moment charged with raw emotion, Ethan gently lifted Lily's chin, his eyes searching hers before he kissed her, a gesture meant to offer solace. Lily responded in kind, their kiss a seal on their newfound connection, both unaware of Samantha's watchful eyes from the confines of her car. To Samantha, hidden in the dark, the scene confirmed her worst fears. The connection between Ethan and Lily was undeniable and deep. Ethan, ever mindful of Lily's immediate needs, suggested, Let me get you a hotel room. You shouldn't be out here. But Lily, determined to maintain some semblance of independence, insisted on a different plan. No, Ethan, I should stay at a hostel. It'll be cheaper. Respecting her wishes, Ethan accompanied her to the nearest hostel, where they booked a suite. The decision to enter the room together was mutual, their earlier kiss evolving into an expression of their deepening bond. In the privacy of the suite, they found solace and understanding in each other's arms, their connection intensifying. Afterward, Ethan, aware of the complexity of the situation and the need to address the chaos awaiting him, made a promise. I'll be back in the morning to figure everything out. Things have changed now, Lily, but I need to go back. Reluctantly leaving Lily in the safety of the hostel, Ethan headed back to the penthouse, unaware of Marco's watchful eyes from another car. Ethan arrived at the hostel the next morning, his hands carrying the small peace offering of a donut and coffee, hopeful to start the day on a positive note with Lily. However, the sight that greeted him washed away any semblance of hope. The door to Lily's room was ajar, an ominous sign that immediately set off alarms in his mind. Inside, Lily was nowhere to be found, her belongings scattered, her phone left behind as if she had vanished into thin air. Panic set in as Ethan frantically questioned the hostel personnel, but no one had seen Lily leave. The realization that she was missing sent Ethan into a spiral of worry and fear. He dialed the police, his voice urgent, only to be met with the standard procedure that required him to wait 48 hours before they could officially declare her missing. With no time to waste, Ethan rushed to the Reed household, desperate for help. The news of Lily's disappearance sent shockwaves through the family, with Maria and even Samantha, despite their complicated relationships, rallying to assist in the search for Lily. But as they began to piece together the events, another piece of the puzzle emerged. Marco was missing too. The evening brought a grim discovery as the police located Marco on Highway 15, heading away from San Diego. Despite the suspicion that clouded his detention, Marco's distress was palpable. Tears streamed down his face as he vehemently denied any involvement in Lily's disappearance. I love her. I would never hurt her, he repeated, his cries echoing the desperation of his situation. As the third day dawned with no sign of Lily, the collective hope that had driven their search began to dim. Ethan, faced with the unbearable silence and the empty leads, found himself grappling with a heartbreaking possibility. Had Lily chosen to disappear on her own? The thought that she might have decided to erase her presence, 
leaving behind everything and everyone, including him, was a possibility Ethan couldn't bear. Yet, as the hours ticked by with no word, no sign of Lily, he couldn't help but fear the worst, that Lily had indeed chosen to start anew, far away from the chaos that had enveloped their lives, leaving him behind to wonder and to mourn the future they might have had. In a state of despair and seeking solace, Ethan made his way to the clinic to visit his mother, Claire, who had become his only source of comfort in the tumultuous sea of his emotions. Upon arrival, he noticed that Claire looked somewhat better, the medication appearing to have a positive effect on her condition. Sitting beside her, Ethan began to unravel the tangled web of his recent life, sharing each detail from the beginning, his voice laden with the weight of his experiences. As he spoke, Claire listened, tears silently streaming down her cheeks, a testament to the depth of her empathy for her son. Ethan's story unfolded, culminating in his resigned declaration that with Lily gone, he saw no other option but to marry Samantha, to somehow find a semblance of stability in the chaos that had enveloped his life. It was then, at this pivotal moment, that Claire found her voice, a voice that had been silent for so long. That's not possible, she whispered, her words cutting through the heavy silence. Ethan, shocked and bewildered by the sound of his mother speaking, turned to her with wide eyes. Why? What are you talking about, Mom? Claire, gathering the fragments of her strength, began to reveal a story long buried, a secret that would alter the course of Ethan's life. Samantha, Samantha is your sister, she said, each word heavy with the weight of years of silence. Ethan reeled from the revelation, his mind struggling to grasp the implications. What are you talking about, Mom? Claire's story unfolded, a tale of betrayal, blackmail, and heartbreak. She spoke of a time when Ethan was just a child, a time when Elizabeth, Samantha's mother, entered their lives, weaving a web of deceit and manipulation. She tried to steal your father from us. They had a... a moment of weakness. And then she was pregnant with Samantha, Claire explained, her voice a mix of sorrow and regret. The consequences of that moment had ripple effects, casting a shadow over their lives. Elizabeth, driven by greed and a lack of moral compass, regularly blackmailed Ethan's father, threatening to expose the scandal and ruin them unless she received substantial sums of money. She had another man she later married, but she never stopped threatening us. Your father began drinking to escape the blackmail and the shame, and the constant threats. They sent me into a spiral of panic attacks and depression I've never fully recovered from. Claire shared, her story painting a picture of a family torn apart by secrets and lies. Ethan sat in stunned silence, the pieces of his past clicking into place, a past marred by deception and a secret that reshaped his understanding of his family, his relationship with Samantha, and the path forward. Claire's inquiry about Lily and the revelation of the days that had passed since her disappearance brought a sense of urgency to their conversation. It's been almost three days, Ethan replied, the weight of each day heavy on his heart. At Claire's insistence, driven by a haunting suspicion rooted in her own past experiences, they ventured into a possibility that Ethan hadn't considered. There's a place we need to check, one I remember all too well. Help me to the car, Claire said, determination in her voice despite her frailty. As Ethan drove, guided by Claire's directions, she recounted a chilling episode from the past. She spoke of a harrowing confrontation with Elizabeth, Samantha's mother, a woman whose actions had once cast a long shadow over their lives. Claire revealed how this confrontation had escalated to the point where she was held captive in an underground space set up by Elizabeth, a memory that haunted her still. I'm not certain, but if history is repeating itself, we need to check, Claire urged, her voice a mix of fear and resolve. Arriving at a secluded area surrounded by dense woods, Claire signaled for Ethan to stop. Together, they made their way into the forest, Claire leading despite her weakness, driven by a mother's instinct to uncover the truth. The underbrush gave way to a hidden bunker, its existence a sinister testament to past sins. With a mixture of apprehension and desperation, Ethan broke the lock, the sound echoing ominously through the silent woods. 
the door creaked open to reveal a dimly lit interior, and there on the cold concrete floor lay Lily. Her condition was dire. She was lying in a fetal position, her body frail and trembling. Her clothes were disheveled, and there were clear signs of dehydration and malnourishment. Her eyes, once vibrant, were now dull with exhaustion and fear, barely recognizing the figures who stood above her. In the aftermath of their harrowing discovery, the truth about Lily's disappearance unraveled like a dark tapestry, each thread revealing a more sinister picture. The revelation that Elizabeth, Samantha's mother, was behind Claire's, and now Lily's abduction sent shockwaves through their circle. Motivated by a twisted narrative spun from jealousy and resentment, Elizabeth's actions were a stark reminder of the deep scars that past grievances could inflict upon the present. Her arrest, facilitated by Claire's determined accusations, marked a turning point, bringing a semblance of justice to a saga that had caused immeasurable pain. The revelation served as a catalyst for change and reflection among those most affected by the ordeal. Marco, absolved of suspicion and freed from custody, returned to his ranch, a place of solace and simplicity that stood in stark contrast to the complexities and shadows of the recent past. Accompanying him were Lily's parents, seeking a new beginning away from the echoes of the events that had so deeply impacted their lives. Amidst the turmoil, a beacon of hope emerged. Ethan, his heart laid bare by the trials they had endured, found solace in the bond that had blossomed between him and Lily. In a moment of tranquility, beneath the expansive sky that promised new horizons, he proposed to Lily. The proposal was not just a question, but an offering of a shared future, a testament to their resilience and love. Lily, her spirit emboldened by the strength she had discovered within herself, accepted, her heart alight with the promise of tomorrow. Together with Claire, whose own journey from the shadows of her past had led her to a place of healing and redemption, they embarked on a journey to New York. This move symbolized more than a change of location. It was a step towards a new life, one built on the foundations of love, understanding, and the courage to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As they left behind the landscapes that had witnessed their darkest moments and their greatest triumphs, Ethan, Lily, and Claire looked towards the skyline of New York with eyes full of hope. The city, with its endless possibilities and the promise of new beginnings, awaited them. It was here, among the bustling streets and towering skyscrapers, that they would write the next chapters of their lives. Together, their spirits intertwined in a dance of joy, resilience, and love that would carry them forward into the future.